send us a clean CR, a clean debt ceiling. That's the path forward. There's no need for conversations. We've spoken loudly and clearly, and we have the support of the President of the United States, and that's pretty good. All right, there you go. Harry Reid uh, speaking yesterday. Of course, today, the Senate uh, passing their version of the uh, CR, continuing resolution, and now, now it goes back to the House. And joining us now is uh, Florida Congressman Dennis Ross from the 15th Congressional District in the great state of Florida. Hello, sir. How are you? Very good, Steve. How are you? I'm okay. Okay, so 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 now the, the Senate has spoken. It goes back to the House. So you guys are going to be working all weekend, correct? Correct. And uh, we expect to vote on this tomorrow. We'll have a conference sometime tomorrow morning uh, as to how to respond to the CR. And I'm hopeful that they will consider my amendment to make sure that uh, members of Congress and their staff are 100 percent subjected to this uh, Obamacare law. Well, that, well, I want to get to that. Yeah. So you're, you're going to introduce an amendment or, or hope to introduce an amendment. And that would depend on whether or not, I guess, Correct. Boehner would, would let you introduce the amendment that would uh, subject uh, members of Congress and their staffs to the same rules and, and costs that uh, everyone else in America would have, right? Yeah, yeah, correct, Steve. Right now, under the law, uh, the members of Congress and their staff are subjected to uh, the uh, provisions of Obamacare. However, a month and a half ago, the Office of Personnel Management came out with a ruling at the request of the president that said that despite them being under Obamacare, the government will continue to fund their uh, subsidies or their uh, contribution for health care benefits. There's no basis either in fact or in law for that. In fact, uh, it's just the opposite, that, that, that if this is going to happen, then Congress must enact it themselves uh, to allow for this contribution to happen. The American public expect that Congress should not be given any special fix because the American people are not giving any special fix from Obamacare. Uh, do, you ant- for, do you anticipate any other amendments uh, being attached, or, or if you had yes. your way, being attached to the, the House's answer this weekend to the uh, continuing resolution? Well, yes. I expect that the, on the um, uh, medical device tax, that may also be uh, uh, attempted to be put on to the uh, continuing resolution. There will most likely be an amendment to offer a one-year delay of the implementation of Obamacare. Look, what we have to be honest with ourselves with is, is that, that that we have to do everything we can in our power to prevent this bill from prevent Obamacare from becoming reality. But if we can't, then the least thing we can do is subject ourselves to it 100 percent, the same as the American public will have to be and experience the same pain that the American public can receive from this law. So I'm hopeful that when we get together tomorrow, that if we offer this as an amendment, quite frankly, the Senate won't take it and they'll agree to a one-year delay, and America will be better off if we have a one-year delay, at least on this this, this law. All right, now, 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 you, now, now follow, walk me through what you just said. You said if you offer this amendment and you said the Senate won't take it and that'll result in a one-year delay? Well, no. let, let, let's, let's talk about yeah. this, Steve. We, we will get the bill out tomorrow. We right. will pass the bill tomorrow. Right, then it goes back to the then Senate. It goes back to the Senate. Now, what we put into this bill... Um, is is really going to be our next our next offer, if you will? This right. Episode. So let let's say it's your it's your amendment, and let's say it's uh it's the the uh, the tax on the um uh, device. The, right. Okay. So then the Senate says what? No. Well, the Senate doesn't want to take a vote on this because I'll tell you why. Uh, there are some marginal seats out there of members of the Senate that are in red states that are Democrats that don't want to vote against having themselves being subjected to all the laws under Obamacare as all the American public right. are. So they would rather have a one-year delay that they could vote on instead of having to vote to exempt themselves from the contribution uh, of the federal government to their health care plan. If we can allow for this to come out of the House, I believe that we can ultimately reach a negotiated settlement of a clean CR funding the government for at least 60 days, hopefully a lot longer than that, and to have a one-year delay in the implementation of Obamacare. If we do that, everybody wins. The Democrats have something they can rest their loyals on and say, look, you know, we still got the government funded. The Republicans say we've prevented the implementation of the health care law. And now we can spend a year trying to figure out exactly what needs to be corrected in it if it does happen. Or if we're fortunate, get a new Senate next year and get rid of this law entirely. All right, so Congressman, and by the way, we're talking to Congressman Dennis Ross from Florida, a Republican here on the Steve Malzberg Show. So that would mean, officially or unofficially, talks, negotiations, yes. which is something both the president and Harry Reid said there will be none of. Well, you know, that, that's great uh, puffery or posturing, if you will, uh, in, 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 in the public eye. But in reality, they have to talk. I, I mean, w- the that they have to. This is this is one of those situations where they can't walk away from this and say it's our way or no way. I mean, 
you know, the essence of politics is compromise, and not compromising your principles, but compromising the issues that you believe will get each party to some degree of winning. And this will get us to some degree of winning. We save the government from a shutdown. The American public are not exposed to the worst health care law we've ever seen. Uh, and we have uh, a chance to move on to the next issue, which we desperately need to take up. The debt ceiling. The debt ceiling. All right. Now, Congressman, now let me ask you this. Um, so the debt ceiling, you guys will not take up the debt ceiling until the, the CR is taken care of, right? At this juncture, correct. Yeah, We're, because cause I've read somewhere where that was a change in strategy, and I'm thinking, well, that's the strategy that makes sense. See what you could get out of this, and then if you can't get anything out of this, or if you can only get one little piece out of this, then you have, then, then you could use your leverage uh, w- with the debt ceiling, right? Well, that's true. And I think that, that many members of our Republican Congress would be willing to raise the debt ceiling for one year if we could get a one-year delay in the implementation of Obamacare. The problem was we did not know what was going to happen when the CR came back here, and so many members were not willing to say they would support the debt ceiling issue, and that was taken off the table today. Okay, so all right, so so that it, it's all open. I mean, this is yeah. uh, this is uh, going to be quite a weekend. And let me just uh, ask you on another front: uh, we have the, the president today uh, touting the fact that uh, uh, we have this agreement in the United Nations on a resolution. Inspectors are going into Syria, and they're going to inspect for the chemical weapons. And he said this never would have happened without the threat of force. Of course, in this resolution, uh, if Syria doesn't comply, there is no threat of force in this resolution, which has uh, you know been agreed to by the Security Council. So. Um, can we really rely on Syria to fess up after all this time and, and show and hand over all their chemical weapons, or do you think uh, that's uh, pie in the sky? Well, I think it's pie in the sky. Look, Syria is not going to give up everything. They're going to play the game as long as they can to prevent a strike against them. If, if this president firmly believed that the threat of military strike is what uh, allowed us to get to where we are, he should have done a threat of military strike back in March when they knew they were using chemical weapons. And if he had done so, we would have prevented the massacre of 1,400 of them in August of this year. So I, I don't believe that. I think that, that we do need to exhaust all diplomatic avenues. I don't think we've been doing it soon enough or properly enough, but now we're don't, going down that path, and we need to. You know, I mean, we need to do everything we can to remove chemical weapons from, from all countries. And, and one more, uh, the, the uh, Secretary of State meeting with his counterpart in the, uh, in the, uh, the multi-nation meeting uh, and shaking his hand and actually saying late last night that, um, you know, very soon we could end the sanctions on Iran. I mean, uh, based on what? No, we can't do that. We need to increase the sanctions on Iran. They are diligently going after a nuclear reactor. They are diligently going after refining more and more uh, nu- nuclear uh, a- energy as that will be used for... Right, the uranium, the yeah. centrifuges. Yeah. So what makes Kerry say something like that? I, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe you did have a magic answer. Not at uh, all. All right, listen, Congressman, thank you very much, thank sir. You. All yes, right. Sir, have a great day. You too. As he prepares for a long yes. weekend of work, uh, Congressman uh, Dennis Ross of Florida.